<laughs> That'll make the banquet it's video. Cards? Yeah. <laughs> we are now joined by our winning crew chief and our winning team owner from today's 38th annual NASCAR Racing Experience 300, and that's crew chief Travis Mack and team owner Dale Earnhardt Jr. from the number one pilot fly or the number one pilot flying J American Heart Association Chevrolet. Questions here in the deadline room? Raise your hand, and we will get wireless mic to you. We'll start with Holly Kane to go to Bob. Thank you, Holly Kane with the NASCAR Wire Service. And sorry about this, but selfishly for a story I'm working on, could you talk about your nephew's day today? That was really good for him to be out front leading those laps and, and, and his afternoon. Yeah, just, I mean, Jeffrey's worked really hard um, to get to where he is today. He had an opportunity working with DEI years ago. We, we had him in a car once at Richmond. And um, since then, it's just kind of been a struggle for him to find some footing, but he's sort of reinvented himself over the past several years and really applied himself. He's got some good people around him that are also helping to market him and use social media and several other things to uh, to activate and engage fans and so forth. So um, it's get, it's built into what you see today, and uh, he's, done, he's done that on his own. I mean, he's got good people around him, like I said, that's helped him build this, um, this new version of himself, but it's... Uh, it's who he is, and it's authentic, and I'm glad that he's in a great race car t to be able to go out there and run well, and I know he'd have wanted to win today. Um, I mean, it'll be exciting to see him at the other racetracks uh, throughout the year. Mm -hmm. Go next to Bob, then to Tyler, and then to Matt. Uh, Bob Hockris, Fox Sports. Uh, Dale, I know it's an exciting day today, but it's also a sad day with uh, the passing of Sam Bass. Have, had you gotten to talk to him recently and just what were kind of your emotions throughout the day? Yeah, we worked real hard over the last year or so trying to help Sam. And um, um, it's just difficult, you know, that somebody, want, they're here one day and they're, they're not, you know, here anymore. It's just so hard to understand. And, um, you know, he just had so – everybody knows how – Sam was, how great he was, how amazing. Uh, he, there's not many people that you meet in your life that are so happy to see you every time they see you. And he was that way. And, and so he was set a, such a great example for all of us on how, you how to treat people and how to maintain relationships. And um, he just seemed so grateful for everything that ever happened to him. Um, so I, uh, I hope that he's celebrated because he meant a lot to this sport. Go to Tyler, then to Matt, then to Doug. Hey, Dale, Tyler Jones, Kel W in Kansas City. Does this win for Michael with w the way you worked with him remind you at all of when your dad worked with Michael Waltrip getting that Daytona win? Yeah, I think there's some similarities. <clears throat> um, but it would, it, you know, I represent Kelly, um, L.W. Miller, and... Um, Rick Hendrick and a whole slew of other people that were behind Michael in this whole operation. And the um, Michael's not the same person that we hired. The guy that you'll see when he comes into Victory Lane, obviously he's had a hell of a transition over the last hour, but he's changed a lot in the last several months that we've worked with him. Um, I imagine that when you drive uh, and you're relegated to running in the back of the field regardless of your efforts in and out of the car. It's got to be extremely frustrating, and you sort of get programmed uh, to approach your job a certain way. And we've had to try to convince Michael, I think, to ch change his approach and his mentality toward racing, encourage him to uh, believe in his potential and reignite his passion and enjoyment for driving and racing. And um, that was a very challenging thing to do with anyone. And <clears throat> when Travis became available, uh, I thought as soon as I heard the news that he was available, that we needed him to crew chief for uh, Michael because I know Travis's mentality his personality his fire and his his drive is exactly what would ignite michael's um passion and drive and desire and and uh 
So I was so thankful that we were able to organize uh, that that union between Travis and Michael Annette. And I told T Mac that if you know, imagine he was sort of down about his situation, having been let go from his job as a crew chief in '95 car. And I told him, I said, think about what that would feel like to go to Victory Lane with Michael Annette, and how that might make you feel as a person and an individual and in, and in your profession. So. They're realizing that dream, and it's so awesome to watch. So I'm glad that I'm a part of it, and uh, this is a great, great day. Matt? Matt Weaver, Auto Week. First for you, Dell. Um, you're a restrictor plate ace, always have been. Uh, what are you seeing out of Speed Weeks, you know, the two, three cup races so far, Xfinity today, that's not making it as ex exciting as we're used to? I don't know what's going on with the – the high line becoming just so clearly dominant to listen to, uh, you know, to listen to the drivers and to, to watch what happened today in the race. Um, it doesn't seem like it's entirely by choice that they all ride up there. It's by necessity. And mm, there's a million people with a lot of smarts and engineering minds that could have a lot of great opinions on what could be done to change the way the cars react to each other. And, uh, you know, I just encourage those people to get, um, to get together and, and, and see what could be done. I, I, we're going to have a completely different package when we go to Talladega. So this is all probably, uh, it could be a non-issue, but the, the Xfinity cars and cup cars, not entirely, similar and they both react the same way and did the same thing and raced the same way right the drag numbers aren't the same the power ain't the same the, the drivers aren't the same but they looked the same and ran the same and had the same similar race that we've seen it all weekend but um you know i i'm not going to sit up here and take this opportunity to tell you you know specifically my ideas on what i would do there's so many opinions that it's just would get lost in the in the noise, but we'll go to Talladega with a completely different package and hope that it's different. <laughs> and one of those great minds, Travis, I mean, you build these cars. Is there anything in the, the regulations, the build that could attribute to what we've seen? Um, it's, it's really hard to say. It takes such a orchestration of fast cars that have to try to take over those cars running up top. So it's, it's very difficult for them to get in line it's like they need the communication with each other like they used to so they could talk to each other and they could all go at the same time. But if they don't if they don't have that same time moment that they all go at the same time, they're not going to overpass the 10 cars running the high line wide open. So um helps having a fast car out front like we did. That was, that was I love awesome. the package. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I hope they stick with this one. <laughs> this is the package that uh, I worked worked with my whole time at Hendrick Motorsports with Dell, and we always prided ourselves on building fast speedway cars. Um, I kind of learned under Steve Berg at Hendrick Motorsports, and um, ever since I started, I've always prided myself on speedway racing and uh, building fast cars here. We're going to go next to Doug, and then to Lewis, and then upstairs to the press box. Doug Turnbull for WSB and PRN, and since Michael and Ed's joined us, I actually want to ask uh, first you, Michael, and then Travis, just about the redemption that this is, because... Uh, sort of innocuously last year, Travis, because you weren't on a on a front running team, you, that job changed. And then obviously, Michael, you've had the drought there. This seems to be a weekend about redemption with Austin Hills win yesterday too. So can y'all just talk about getting the monkey off your back and sort of how this probably will change the impression of you going forward? What it means to you? Yeah, definitely. I mean, not only um, you know taking a lot of criticism for if I belong in this car the the past couple of years and and. You know, the results, I, you know, I, I earned that criticism and, and put a lot on myself. So, um, you know, this offseason and, and just put everything I had into into this team, into this car, into this, you know, upcoming season, um, just to, to make sure there was no variables that we can control and, and didn't, you know, just didn't want to, you know, you know, stay Daytona, but didn't want to pull out of the tunnel and think, man, if I would have done this, you know, maybe leading up to this weekend, we would have had a better result. And I feel like we did everything we possibly could. I know Travis and the guys did at the shop. I've never seen so much work go into a, a speedway 
Speedway car, and I don't think it has a scratch on it, to be honest with you. So that's pretty exciting going to Talladega. So um, it was just uh, a lot of fun. A, a lot of uh, homework went into this. I didn't think it was – I don't – you know, our sport's not easy, but I didn't think it was going to be that easy. But it's just a testament to how good that car was, the Hendrick power. And, um, you know, and honestly, someone said someone out, something out there – that that last pit stop, I think we got out by an inch and beat our teammate out, and that, that was that was the difference. So just the the little things here, and, and we were able to control that, and the guys were spot on, and we got out, you know, with him drawing the number one pit sp pit stall on Thursday. It started there, so just had a really good feeling about the weekend. Luis Torres, Motorsports Tri Tribune. I got a question for Michael, and first, Michael. Six years ago at Daytona, your career and also your life drastically changed with that incident that sidelined you for a couple of months. And now you come back here to win Daytona and prove the critics that you do belong at this racetrack. Has that come through your mind in recent memory when you come down here to just move on from what happened that day to now you're a winner in the Xfinity Series? Yeah, I mean, that wreck, it, it really doesn't affect me at all other than I look back on it we had a really good season the year before in that 43 car at fifth in points and just really had some big momentum going and was, you know, going for a championship that, that following year. And then everything changed and sat out for three months. And, you know, I put it on myself. I didn't bounce back the way I should have and, and just ne never, really, uh, never really got back to where I was the year before that happened. Um, don't know why, honestly. Uh, nothing inside me changed how I felt about our sport or anything. So um, to, to come back, you know, this weekend after the year we had and to start it the way we did, and, and there's just been a really good aura around around this one team. Even now it's the one team. That's, you know, that was awesome. So it's, it's just everything's going in the right direction. Had a really good feeling sitting in the driver's meeting today staring at the trophy. I'm like, man, that's gonna that's going home with us. I really felt that way. So uh, it's awesome. And, and, it's, and I keep going back to – you know, not only, you know, Dale and Kelly and LW sticking with me through the, these past couple of years and, um, you know, and then T-Mac coming on board and, and jumping right in and, and turning this program around has been awesome to see. And the second one goes to Travis. You came in la last summer to call the shots for Michael. What do you see from Michael that people just don't understand or don't get when people are saying that he doesn't belong to this, right, this and that? Oh. And you know he wants to run. He wants to run good so bad. You know he just he just needs the people around him to believe in him, like we have. Um, just come in with that mentality that we're not going to accept running fifth or tenth or fifteenth. You know that's not acceptable to me. And so us pushing each other to get better is and we're pushing the team to get better. They could feel the sense of urgency and the um, improvements that we're making. You know it's it's a feeling in the shop. You know everybody's looking at us. I told them. In the garage, I want all the teams to look at our team and look at us and say that, you know, that's the best team out here. So we're, we're working towards that goal. We're going to go upstairs to the press box, and then we'll come back down to the back corner to PJ. Justin Malillo, the racing experts. Congratulations to all three of you, first of all, on your win today. Uh, this question is going to be for Dale. Um, it was a strong debut for the number eight car today, um, Chase Elliott said to me on Wednesday on media day that he was only scheduled for today's race in the car. Uh, originally, it was going to be Spencer Gallagher uh, slated for the number eight car. Um, is that still the plan for the next two super speed red races? I can't answer that. I don't have that information. Um, I wish Kelly was here because she knows that I remember her telling me the answer to this a couple of days ago. <laughs> and I can't remember what she said, but I don't think Spencer's going to run. I think it's going to be uh, – a couple – I don't know if Chase is going to run in it, but um, I don't think Spencer's going to run ra any races this year. I'm not sure. We're going to come back downstairs here to PJ. Michael Dale, congratulations to you all. Uh, WJW, Fox 8 in Cleveland. Wondering what this win not only means for you and your team, but also your main sponsor, Pilot Flying J, and, of course, Jimmy Haslam. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, starting off – uh, with Pilot Flying J, I mean, they they had a sticker on our late model. It's about the size of the the embroidery on my collar here, and they've been there from the very beginning. Honestly, um, you know, and and they were on on the hood of the car for my first win in ARCA here, 
and um, to, to have them stay on board and, and um, to have American Heart Association on there, which is very important to them. We're going to have it on Atlanta as well uh, to, uh, to put that in victory lane with Pilot Flying J on the quarters. Uh, it's just, uh, it's huge. We've been, we've been telling them for years, you know, and, you know, just stick with us. We're going we're gonna to put the combination together. It's coming. It's coming. Stick with us. And they just keep believing and keep believing. And, um, and here we are, and this is what they deserve. They deserve a, a lot more of these, and uh, it's going to happen. It's, we're, we're, this is just the start. I can't, can't wait to get to Atlanta because I, I was nervous about Daytona and excited, but there's just so much out of your control. Atlanta, all the, all the hard work we've done, we're really going to be able to show off there. Go next to Jacob and then to Zach. Jacob Seelman, Speed Sport Magazine. Uh, two questions. First for Dale here in the middle. Um, Justin was saying on pit road uh, that he knows what you know what michael's been through having to dig back and then to get a big victory you've watched him start to dig out of that hole and now to come back to this point i mean how do you view this milestone for him today from where he joined your organization a couple years ago i don't know how to measure it um i've never been a part of anything quite like it um i don't know that I can think of an instance even in the history of NASCAR that that resembles it. But the, you know, Michael just said a second ago that he was sitting in the driver's meeting and looking at the trophy thinking that's coming home with me, that we're going to win it. And I'm just thinking to myself, like, that's that's a different Michael than the guy that came to work for us. And... I think it's, you know, it's just been awesome to see that transition and him get more and more confidence. And it's been great to watch Travis join that team and sort of gain more and more confidence from the guys around him and 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 just really impressive for those guys to sort of transform that whole group. And, uh, I mean, it'll be important to sustain that success. They believe in themselves, but it'll take a lot of uh, applying themselves throughout the year. And, I, I mean, I, I don't mind sitting here saying that, you know, this will work if Michael applies himself physically and mentally. This will work if the team does the same thing. I've been with teams where I didn't feel like they believed in me, and it's not a good feeling. And our year can feel like a lifetime. And so it's just – he and Michael kind of went through that, and it takes so much to sort of change that mentality to get to where mm -hmm. you believe in yourself and you believe in the pe and you feel that the people around you believe in you as well. It, it really takes a, a lot of personal uh, experiences, and, and, and it's just a very difficult process and path to go through. But I'm so happy for, for Michael and, and Travis both. They both deserve this in their life, and um, – I hope that they continue to raise the bar for themselves and challenge themselves to achieve more. Michael Dale talked about that change, and you even have referenced it a couple times. You know, two parts here. What you know, what was that spark for you? Was it something specific? And then, obviously, how big is this to rebound from what really was such a down and out year last year? Yeah, I think it was just a bunch of little things. I, I think I kept wait waiting, I guess, for a magic wand to wave over me and say, "Hey, you're you're gonna." wake up and feel like you're the the best race car driver out there you know today and and, and that that wasn't going to happen and it was just you know taking taking strides and, and taking little goals one at a time and, and and you know seeing the results seeing you know and, and feeling good about it and you know saying man I want more of that and I think I know how to I think I know the path to go there and and go get and go get some more of it because I enjoy this and and um you know Travis was, and Dale have talked about the the guys believing in you and, and to, you know, words are just words, it's actions. And when you start to see the actions and, and really feel it, it, it that, that helps tremendously. And, and you want to reciprocate and, and give them the results that they deserve. And so uh, that, that was the biggest thing. And, and just, um, you know, just checking off the every box I could to make sure that when I, I showed up down here, there was no doubt in everybody's mind that everybody on this team you know, it's corny, but our, our kind of our hashtag was one team, one dream, one goal. And I b honestly believe everybody on that team believes in that. It's not just a, it's not just a saying. And, uh, you know, we went out and proved it. It's like 
what Dale said though, you know, it's uh it's time to go go show it wasn't fluke and I'm not worried about that. I'm I'm excited to to move forward and put a bunch more wind stickers above that roof. You know, you talk about what driver this resembles and I really feel like I was part of the twenty four team when we got Dale and you came over and we could see the confidence in you and as soon as they announced that we were getting the eighty eight with Dale Junior, we were all ecstatic we were 100 percent in we were so confident with you coming in you know that's what this feels like to me that team transition we had at hendrick then yeah <clears throat> go to zach and then the christian zach at hands kicking the tires.net what was victory lane like for you it, it had been since arca here in 2008 and a lot has changed obviously but what was that whole celebration seeing the trophy seeing all the people I cut the crap out of my hand getting out. I about bust my ass getting out of the car. <laughs> I was like, can't do that. So I sacrificed my hand. But uh, no, it, it was awesome. And it, it goes, I keep going back. It was seeing the guys there and how happy they were because I, I wanted this so bad for them. They'd seen the guys in our shop come back with, you know, race wins and, and the hats and ringing the bell, getting their toast in the shop. And I just, I, I couldn't even look at, Anybody smiled. I just looked at my guys and looked at, at their faces and, and just wanted to, to bring this to them, and we finally get to do it. Hopefully get to do it a bunch more times. But just, just getting out of the car and seeing those guys, and a few of them have been there from the very beginning and, and stuck with me. And, and uh, yeah, just finally get to be able to, to go to sleep tonight and say, man, I, I, I finally did it for them, and they did it for me. Are you a party? Is tonight going to be fun? I don't know. They're, they're getting on the plane. I, I drove down here. I wanted to bring... My dog down, so I drove. So uh, th they might be uh, they might be partied out by the time I get home eight hours from now. Go to Christian. We'll go back upstairs. Uh, Christian Coley, the Motorsports News Source. I have two questions: one for Travis and one for Michael. Travis, in Victory Lane, Travis or in Victory Lane, Greg Ives and Jason Burdett both came up to you and congratulated you. How big does it mean to join them as winners in the Xfinity Series? Uh, it's it's really cool. Those guys coming and congratulate me. You know. I've looked up to those guys since I got at Junior Sports, trying to learn from them. And uh, they're two different mentalities. And I've worked with a lot of different crew chiefs with different aspects on how to do things. You know, I try to just do things my way. And, um, but I take a little bit from all the crew chiefs I've ever worked with. And I've definitely taken a lot from those two guys. They've, they've helped me a lot along the way. And Michael, we ended the season last year with Brett Moffitt delivering Iowa its first national or national series championship. How big does it mean for a Des Moines native Des Moines native to go to victory lane here at Daytona? I mean, it's huge. I, I saw the, the response after, you know, 11 years ago when I won that ARCA race, um, you know, it's huge just because Des Moines there's, you know, Knoxville's 45 minutes down the road, but Des Moines really isn't a big auto racing, um, you know, city, but you know, it, it's on the TV everywhere. And they, they flash that Des Moines, Iowa underneath my name. Uh, it's huge. And people, people realize it. And, and Brett had an amazing year last year and, and I hope to uh, hope to be right up there with what he did. And this is the best way to start. And, um, you know, I can't wait to get back and check my cell phone. There's people you haven't heard of since high school. I'm sure are going to be texting me on there. Head upstairs. Lee Spencer, RacingBoys.com. Travis, the 95 car was a train wreck for both you and, and Casey. I mean, you know, what is... I, I mean, let, let's be real here, right? I'm glad so, you said it. <laughs> so to, to go over to JRM and to have someone like Junior believe in you, to give you that kind of second chance to redeem yourself, it, it's got to be a rewarding feel to be, feeling to be sitting here right now. Yeah, I, I felt like that teenager that kind of ran away from home for a little bit and realized it wasn't better out there. So I come back to the Hendrick family and Junior Sports and – when Dale called me and had me come in, I was super excited. So uh, I've been on board ever since. And just the welcoming, you know, arms back at Junior Motorsports, it's like a family. They uh, brought me right in, and they respected what I had to say and the things I was doing to work with them. You know, I'm working side by side with those guys. I'm not standing above them, dictating them, telling them what to do. I'm, I'm down there digging with them. So it's a lot of fun. Come back down to Dustin. Dustin Albino, front stretch. And, Michael, you've been knocked around a lot in your career. So what would you say was rock bottom? I don't know if there was a, a rock bottom. There was a bunch of really close ones. Um, but I, I, I think last year, missing the playoffs and, and being with this team and this organization, knowing the equipment I was in and, and missing the playoffs was just unacceptable. And um, 
you know, that's that's why I think, uh, you know, I got asked earlier what the spark was. I think it was the second, you know, that checkered flag dropped uh, at Vegas and, and the playoff started and we weren't in them. I think that's what, that's what the spark probably was to make sure something like that never happened again. And, and, um, and, and, and that's what started it. So uh, never want to be in that position again um, with have the best opportunity I've ever had with the people I'm with, the organization I'm with. I, I've told Dale it's it's not a team. It's it's a it really is a family over there, and uh, it's a fun thing to be be a part of. And, and now I'm just I'm glad I'm 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 doing my part. Well, gentlemen, congratulations on the win. We'll see you next week in Atlanta. Thank you. Thank you. That was awesome. <laughs>